Good evening to those bored enough to watch. Approximately three months ago, I made a video about Sonic Adventure, a game that I enjoyed thoroughly and thought of it to be a phenomenal game. I still hold that opinion towards this game. I think that it holds up and it deserves the praise that it gets even to this day. Now, in my Sonic Colors Ultimate video, I stated that I'd be talking about Sonic Adventure 2 at a later date, and in this video, I'm here to do just that. Sonic Adventure was a brilliant game, nothing can ever take that away from it. Many still hold that game close to their hearts, myself included, and all you need to do is play the game to find out why. Sure, it's dated in some ways, such as that of the graphics and whatnot, but it continues to be an outstanding game. Now, as much as I love Sonic Adventure, there exists Sonic games other than itself that I hold dear to me, one of them being Sonic Adventure 2. Now, I had played this game for myself for the first time not long after I played the first game, and I had a blast with it. Sonic Adventure 2 seeks to build upon its predecessor in a multitude of ways, such as that of the gameplay, the music, and the story. Sonic Adventure 2's development began shortly after the completion of the American release of Sonic Adventure in 1998, lasting over 18 months. The game was ultimately intended to be more of an action-oriented game more rather than the adventure-oriented gameplay that embodied the previous game. Furthermore, the game was being developed by Sonic Team USA, which was a former American division of Sonic Team, with contributions from Takashi Izuka and Yuji Naka. One of the main objectives behind this game was taking the things that worked with the previous game and strengthening them, while ultimately ignoring others. This saw many changes to the gameplay be made. For example, the adventure fields in the previous game would ultimately be dropped, alongside Amy Rose and Big the Cat as playable characters. Tails' gameplay would also be changed from what we saw in the previous game to adapt more of E-102 Gamma's playstyle. Additionally, the story was also a component of the game that the team wanted to expand upon, and in order to tell the story, it was decided that new characters would need to be introduced into the franchise, thus seeing the debut of characters such as that of Shadow the Hedgehog and Rouge the Bat. With that, the team decided to focus on three of the gameplay styles from the previous game, Sonic, Knuckles, and E-102 Gamma's. These three forms of gameplay would then be distributed among the six playable characters in the game. While there were a multitude of ideas that saw their implementation into Sonic Adventure 2, some were ultimately dropped from the final product, an example being that of branching pathways in the story. As mentioned earlier, Sonic Team USA was developing this game, which ultimately saw Takashi Izuka needing to move to an office in the USA, primarily that of San Francisco. This is reflected upon in the game, as many of the levels take inspiration from that of the respective city. Now, one of the many differences between this game's development and the previous is that in the latter, the team had tried to implement as much content as possible, whereas in this game they only focused on implementing content they deemed as necessary. Development on this game was also much more streamlined and easier due to the team's growth and experience with the Dreamcast's hardware, with Yuji Naka describing it as them being able to tap the full power of the console and deliver a much better experience. Ultimately, a lot of work went into this game. It shows that the team had decided to create a game that was expansive on the previous in a multitude of ways, with them now being able to achieve a much more streamlined experience in developing the game with their newfound experience in working with the Dreamcast's hardware, and their newfound experience ultimately shows within the game itself. This game is polished, and despite the issues I personally have with it, Sonic Adventure 2 is one of my favourite Sonic games. I think it's brilliant, and in this video, I want to discuss why. So, with that, let's discuss Sonic Adventure 2. In Sonic Adventure 1, you are able to play through the same story through six different perspectives, ranging from Sonic to Big the Cat. Now, while this is a good idea for making the story feel expansive, it ultimately presents a lot of issues, that being that of the gameplay. Six different forms of such a thing is bound to lead to some of them sticking better than others, and as mentioned previously, this game sees the return of three of the six styles in the previous. Ultimately, this warrants a change to the way in which we witness the story of this game unfold. In Sonic Adventure 2, we play the game through the hero and dark story, telling the same story but from differing perspectives of the heroes and villains of the story. While you can certainly play through any first, it's clear that the intended experience is to play through the hero story first. So, with that, the game begins with the iconic scene consisting of Sonic escaping from an airborne helicopter. This scene is brilliantly executed. It serves as an adrenaline rushing beginning to the game. It gets the player hooked with the game starting in media res of Sonic jumping off a helicopter and into the city below him. The player doesn't know what led him here, but as the scene transitions into the first stage of the game, there is no time to question such a thing. So with that, we begin the first stage, City Escape. What I'm going to say about this stage is akin to what many others have also said about it, that this stage is nothing short of brilliant. Sonic's gameplay has evolved considerably since the previous game. While such a thing was a good foundation, the stages were unfortunately littered with things like bad collision which disrupted the flow of the stage and whatnot, all of which seems to have been fixed here. The team's growth and experience with the Dreamcast is shown immaculately in this action-packed stage. So with that, we beat the stage and find ourselves in a boss fight against a military agent of some kind, of which isn't too difficult. 
old. So subsequently to this, we're shown a cutscene, depicting the debut of Shadow the Hedgehog. I think that this is a well-executed debut for his character. He's ominous at the beginning of the game, where we learn nothing about him except for his name and that he shares similar properties to that of Sonic. We also see him use Chaos Control, before he leaves and we're caught by the military once again. Cutting to the desert, we find Knuckles in the debut of Rouge the Bat, a character of whom we also know little about, other than she appears to hunt for jewels as a hobby and not much else. With that, we witness as Eggman attempts to steal the Master Emerald, though Knuckles intervenes, breaking it before he can get away with it. After that, we see as Knuckles is briefly scolded by Rouge as we enter Knuckles' first stage of the game, Wild Canyon. One of the many things I want to get out of the way is that I do not like Knuckles' gameplay in this game, primarily due to the stages and how unnecessarily big they are compared to the previous game's stages. Yes, Sonic Adventure 1's rendition of Knuckles' gameplay saw sections of Sonic's stages be repurposed, however, they were small in size while offering enough of a challenge to find the emerald pieces. All that had to be done in my opinion was make the stages of that similar size, and without Tikal to give the locations of the pieces away, it could have been better than the previous game. Furthermore, they also changed the mechanics to the gameplay to ensure that the indicator depicting how close you are to a piece only went off for one piece at a time, which is a change that makes the game unnecessarily cumbersome to play through. While Wild Canyon is decent in terms of the stages, others such as that of Pumpkin Hill, Aquatic Mine, and later stages subsequent to that are cumbersome to play through. With that, we complete the stage and enter a cutscene of Tails travelling to Prison Island, monologuing about how he believes Sonic wouldn't do the things that he's recently been accused of, as seen previously. Sonic has been wrongfully captured by the military as they seem to mistake him for Shadow. However, as Tails notices Amy and Eggman, he takes a detour to confront Eggman, thus initiating a boss fight. Tails' gameplay is an extension to what we've previously seen in E102 Gamma's game play. While there is no time limit, we need to shoot our way through the stages as a form of defense, as we only have limited health of which can be replenished through obtainable items and also rings throughout his stages. So with that, after we defeat Eggman, we enter Tails' first stage, Prison Lane. Tails' gameplay is definitely very fast paced, akin to that of Sonic's and it's certainly a very enjoyable one at that. With that, after we beat the stage, we cut to Amy, who somehow managed to make it to Sonic before Tails, and after learning that Shadow was also here alongside Eggman, Sonic is freed from his cell by Amy, and thus we begin Metal Heart. Harbor, another brilliant stage. This stage is one that introduces the light shoes, which allows for us to perform the light speed dash from the previous game. One of the many things I've noticed is that this game is one that uses a lot of action set pieces within. For example, in City Escape, we have a truck from Gun, the military that was after Sonic, that chases after us during a section of that stage, and in this one we now board a missile as it launches into the sky and then fall from it in order to reach the goal ring. I think that this is a great addition to the game. It helps with keeping the stages distinct and unique from one another, as each one is now made to be even more memorable from one another. With that, we reach the jungle where we happen to run into Shadow. After the two interact, we engage in a boss fight with him. It shouldn't pose us too much of a difficulty, so after of which we enter Green Forest. Learning that Eggman plans to blow up the island, Sonic rushes through the forest to find Amy and Tails. This stage is also phenomenal. I think that it's great to see that the game keeps finding new ways to make the stages interesting and memorable. This stage is definitely that of an adrenaline rush of sorts, as you only have 8 minutes to clear the stage. However, after that, we cut to Prison Island blowing up, with Sonic, Tails, and Amy getting away just in time. Back with Knuckles we play through Pumpkin Hill. As mentioned before, I really do not like this stage, as well as Knuckles' gameplay, and this stage is an example as to why. In this stage, we're to traverse through this vast area in search of three of the emerald pieces, a lot of it being consistent of islands of which are long distances away from each other, and which you must also travel to and from with a camera that is very difficult to work with. I do not like this stage, and that extends to Knuckles' gameplay as a whole. The camera is something that has been an issue throughout the entirety of the game in terms of trying to navigate such a thing. However, it was something that I never brought up due to the fact that the others' gameplay didn't necessarily require for the camera navigation as much as Knuckles' does, and it becomes a prominent issue when you're trying to glide through different areas only for the camera to begin making things difficult for you. Furthermore, the size of this stage in particular doesn't necessarily aid with much. With there being so much you need to explore, factored in with the difficult camera, these stages can be a pain to play, and for me it essentially boiled down to just wandering around for 10 minutes hoping to run into the pieces of the emerald, or just going to the hints and trying to decipher something from there. But with the camera acting strangely, I lose my way and thus need to find my way back to where I was, assuming death hadn't taken me first. That aside, we beat the stage and cut to Eggman broadcasting himself across the city, as he vows to rule the world. Is this cutscene familiar to anyone? He blows up half of the moon, and thus we cut to Sonic, Tails, and Amy discussing such a thing from afar. They need to find Eggman, and Tails pulls a Chaos Emerald, one of which is later revealed to be one that he was awarded after saving the city in the previous game, and splits up with Sonic to find a way out of their pursuer's grasp. This stage is definitely a great one to play through, though at times the camera can definitely get in the way of progressing through the stage. Though with that aside, we complete the stage and cut back to Knuckles, with whom finds himself in the aquatic mine, thus warranting the stage. I use this stage as an example as to why I don't like Knuckles' stages, and that's 
that's due to the fact that I think that it's simply too crowded to be able to accommodate Knuckles' gameplay. In fact, it didn't with the camera being difficult to work with, swimming in this stage is suddenly a big pain in the neck. However, with that stage complete, we cut back to Tails and Amy who are still trying to track down Eggman's location, alluding to the idea that the six other Chaos Emeralds may be in outer space. While the two converse with Sonic, Knuckles emerges from the sewers, though there's no time to be talking, as Tails has managed to track the transcript between the President and Eggman, giving them a lead. With that, they follow the President's limo through Route 101, played through a brief minigame seeing us navigate Tails as he pursues the President. After this, we listen in as the President is forced to surrender to the Eggman Empire, before Sonic arrives with Tails, where the two find out where Eggman is transmitting from, the Space Colony Arc. We cut to the group standing outside a pyramid, seemingly that of Eggman's base as Knuckles appears to have seen Eggman and Rouge entering. With that, Tails departs to find an entrance, thus initiating the stage, Hidden Base. After of which we find ourselves at the door to the centre of the base. However, the door's locked, and to find the key, we rely on Knuckles to do so, thus initiating the stage, the Death Chamber. There isn't really much for me to say about this stage that I haven't already, so after completing the stage, we find ourselves in a boss fight against King Boon Boo. In order to defeat him, we need to try and move around him to hit this hourglass here, after of which a crack of sunlight will emerge from the hole it revealed, allowing for a window of time of which can be used to attack. After you beat this fight, we finally run into Eggman who summons the Egg Golem, thus initiating that boss fight. For this one, you need to reach his back, climb the steps and hit the button on his head to deal damage. After the fight, we cut to the space shuttle moving for takeoff, with Sonic and the others finally reaching the arc. However, when they crash into a rock, the pieces of the Master Emerald scatter into space, and Knuckles attempts to leave, and thus, Sonic, Tails and Amy are left to execute their plan to prevent Eggman from firing his weapon again. The Space Colony arc was once an advanced research centre, before it was shut down 50 years ago after a terrible accident had occurred. But enough backstory, as of right now Tails and Sonic intend to use their fake emerald that Tails had created after studying the rewind to swap it out before the weapon is fired, but before that, Tails departs to find the power supply and destroy it, leaving Sonic to find the control room. So with that, we begin the stage, Eternal Engine, which sees Tails endeavouring into the arc to find the power supply, after of which we cut to Sonic in the control room just 45 minutes before the arc is set to fire its cannon, though before the two can act from there, Eggman interrupts their transmission, telling Tails to inform Sonic to meet him at the research facility of the arc. We regress back to 1 hour and 26 minutes before the cannon is set to fire. We find Knuckles in search of the emerald pieces once more, thus beginning the stage, Meteor Heard. In my opinion, I think that Knuckles' stages gradually get worse as the game goes on. The stages are either too big to find just three emeralds within, or are just too crowded, and the camera doesn't exactly do itself any favours either. With that, we run into Rouge the Bat, someone of whom demands the emeralds Knuckles has been seeking. However, when he refuses, we begin the fight. This fight shouldn't be too difficult, and with it ending in stalemate, we end with a cutscene showing the two arguing before Rouge trips and nearly falls into the lava, hadn't Knuckles saved her. After of which, she gives him the emeralds and with the two seemingly on good terms, they part ways. This is, thankfully, the last of the treasure hunting stages for the hero story, and with that, we cut back to Sonic, who needs to find Eggman, thus beginning the stage, Crazy Gadget. This stage is definitely a difficult one, with the camera continually shifting and whatnot, it could certainly become a perplexing one to play through at times. However, after completing the stage, we arrive at a cutscene, Eggman offering that if Sonic were to hand over the emerald, he let Amy go. With Sonic deciding to hand over the fake emerald, he places it down, before Eggman traps him within a space shuttle, revealing that he already knew it was a fake, and with that, Sonic is sent back down to Earth. With the shuttle about to blow, we see him reminisce on what Tails had told him about the emerald, the same wavelength and properties as a real one, but less powerful. With that, we see Sonic contemplating whether he can pull something off before we see the space shuttle blow up. From within the arc, Tails, determined now more than ever to put a stop to Eggman's plan, takes him on in a fight. This fight shouldn't be anything of significant difficulty, so after defeating him, we cut to Knuckles who is outside the colony arc, feeling some strange energy of sorts. He sees Sonic teleport before him. He had managed to use Chaos Control to get out of the shuttle before it blew up. Asking Knuckles to aid Tails and Amy, he plans to use the fake emerald to place it into the cannon before it blows up, thus initiating the final stage of the hero story, the final rush. This stage is definitely one that is adrenaline pumping and is one of my favourites in this game, though after completing the stage, we run into Shadow. As the two begin running, we begin the boss fight against Shadow. This fight sees you needing to attack him as you both run down this never-ending lane, though do be sure not to stay in the same place for too long, as you may fall alongside the platform. I really like this fight. Shadow is a character of whom had no respect for Sonic and simply saw him as an imposter of himself, but this time the two fight on mutual ground. They see each other as equals of sorts. After this fight, we cut back to Tails and Amy finally getting communication from Sonic. With Eggman secretly taking hold of the real Chaos Emerald, the two watch as Sonic stops the cannon, thus ending the hero story of this game. Sonic Adventure 2 is split into two different stories, the hero story and the dark story, among the final story once both are complete, of which I'll discuss in due course. So with that, let's discuss the dark story. The game's story is seen from the differing perspectives of the many characters, and what they were doing during their respective moments in the game. For example, this story sees Eggman 
infiltrating a top secret military base in search of a project that his grandfather had been working on, thus initiating the first stage, Iron Gate. This stage is intense, with an abundance of enemies attacking you among other things. I'm sure you may have noticed, the three gameplay forms are split between the six different characters in the game, with little to minor differences between the characters. After we complete the stage, Watches Eggman hacks into the console, releasing the workings of his grandfather, Shadow the Hedgehog. Granting Eggman a wish, Shadow takes on a Bigfoot agent, after of which he tells Eggman to gather more Chaos Emeralds and meet him at the control room of the Space Colony Ark. This leads into the encounter between Knuckles and Rouge, and is why we see Eggman trying to take the Master Emerald, thus prompting it to be broken by Knuckles, thus initiating for us to play as Rouge, who shares the same gameplay as Knuckles. While this gameplay is the same, the stages definitely are where the differences lie, and as with Knuckles' first stage being decent and tolerable at best, the same applies with Rouge, though one of the many things I want to discuss is that of the Emerald radar displayed at the bottom. As mentioned earlier, in Sonic Adventure 1, the radar would go off depending on whether you were close to an Emerald, regardless of which one it was. In this game, the radar only goes off for one Emerald at a time, meaning you could spend large durations of time aimlessly running around in search of the Emerald pieces, or you could get lucky and accidentally run into one like I did. This isn't exactly a good thing when you realise that the stages are significantly much larger than they were in the previous game, and thus you would possibly be roaming more areas several times in hopes the radar may go off. However, with that we beat the stage and cut back to Eggman returning to his base, thus initiating the stage, Sand Ocean. After we complete this stage, we find Eggman in his base, checking as his console reports the ongoing news that Sonic has been accused of robbing a bank of a Chaos Emerald, though we know that this is the work of Shadow the Hedgehog. Thus, we cut to Shadow, remembering the promise he had made to Maria, seemingly to take revenge, thus beginning the stage, Radical Highway. After of which, we cut back to Rouge, who was attempting to find the key to enter Eggman's base, thus beginning the stage, Egg Quarters. After we complete that stage, Rouge finds out that Eggman has already left the Ark, and thus follows him in. Back with Eggman, we see him finding his way to the control room that Shadow had mentioned before, thus beginning the stage, Lost Colony. After completing this stage, we see as Eggman meets with Shadow, who introduces him to the project that his grandfather had been working on, the Eclipse Cannon. This weapon has the capability to destroy an entire planet, but requires large amounts of power that only the seven Chaos Emeralds are able to supply. So with that, Eggman tells Shadow that he'll gather more emeralds. However, before anything can be set in stone, Rude shows up and proposes a deal with Eggman. As a treasure hunter, she's capable of finding the Chaos Emerald, and all she asks is for the radar that allowed for Eggman to find the Master Emerald. So with that, after a nod of approval from Shadow, Eggman accepts. We cut to Prison Island, as the three hatch a plan to get the Chaos Emeralds within the island. While Eggman acts as a distraction for the military troops, allowing for Rouge to sneak in without being detected, Shadow is to place dynamite on the island, and so with that, we play through the stage's weapons bed as Eggman, after of which the three prepare to execute their plan before Amy arrives, mistaking Shadow for Sonic. Eggman instructs the two to go forth, while he deals with Amy. However, Tails arrives, and thus we enter a boss fight. We cut back to Rouge, who is now within the base ready to find the Emerald while Shadow waits in position. She speaks the rather death-defying words of five minutes being plenty, and thus we begin the stage, Security Hall. This stage is definitely a lot more difficult than the others. Normally you'd have a lot of time to wander the stages and come across the emeralds either by chance or through the use of the hints. However, in this stage, you only have five minutes, thus requiring for you to act fast and search as frantically as possible. Thankfully, the stage is somewhat small and easy to memorize to accommodate this challenge, and somehow I managed to score an A rank at the end of it. After we complete the stage, we're caught by a military agent and we enter a boss fight, after of which Rouge becomes trapped. Back with Shadow who's still waiting on the others, he receives a transmission from Rouge over the radio, stating that she's been trapped. Reminded of Maria, Shadow eventually rushes to save Rouge, thus beginning the stage, White Jungle. I also really like this stage. The rush to save Rouge is really emphasized with the timer and the other elements of the stage, though after that, we run into Sonic and engage in a boss fight. After defeating him, we save Rouge and cut to a flashback scene. Shadow was discussing life on Earth with Maria, who's seemingly never been there before, with him telling her that Gerald Robotnik had dedicated his life's work for the happiness and convenience of those on Earth, yet he still doesn't know why he was created. That maybe, just maybe if he ventured down there, he'd have a chance of finding out. We cut back to Rouge and Shadow, discussing his heroic deed of saving her and how uncharacteristic it was of him to do so. Eggman arrives with the six Chaos Emeralds as they fire a test run on the cannon, thus leading to the moon being shot, and thus we cut back to the trio. Eggman is seemingly annoyed as the cannon will take too long to recharge, and at that rate, they will require all of the Chaos Emeralds. Rouge pulls out the newspaper, showing Tails' achievement as saving Station Square in the previous game and how it earned him a Chaos Emerald as a result, so they have a new mission in mind, to track down Tails and take the Emerald currently in his possession. Eggman and Shadow leave, while Rouge says to report something, unable to confirm whether Shadow was the ultimate life form, but states the continuation of her research to confirm her suspicions. So with that, we find ourselves on Route 280, as she'd managed to track down Tails' location through the Emerald. After completing the stage, we cut to Shadow, awaiting an update from Rouge. When she finally tells him that Tails has been spotted, he bounces into pursuit, thus beginning the stage, Skyrail. This stage is definitely quite an interesting one.
one, as it revolves around that of grinding on rails, which has a great feel to it while doing so. Other than that, after we complete the stage, we watch as Tails takes off. With Eggman telling Shadow to leave him be, we cut back to the heroes, which just saw Sonic defeat the Egg Golem and break the restraining device, thus requiring for Eggman to fight it too. Back with Rouge, she tricks Eggman into giving her the password for the control console, and thus begins looking into Shadow. And after being struck by something, she notices that the pieces of the Master Emerald are missing, and thus goes after them herself, thus warranting the stage Mad Space. When playing through the stage, it almost felt as if though it saw Knuckles' iteration of this section of the game and tried to make it worse in every way possible. Instead of being a big stage in width, it's now a stage that is not only as such, but also much bigger vertically, meaning that there are different layers and thus different sections we need to traverse through. With that aside, after completing the stage, we fight Knuckles, thus warranting the same ordeal witnessed in the hero story. After that, we cut back to Shadow and Eggman, with whom wonder the whereabouts of Rouge, but more importantly, they notice the fake emerald that Sonic and Tails had been planning to use against them. With that, Eggman intends to go back to the Ark to confront them, but before he leaves, he tells Shadow that should anything happen to himself, he's relying on him to finish the job. With that, we begin the stage, Cosmic Wall. After completing the stage, Eggman captures Amy and thus the cutscene consisting of Sonic being sent out into space ensues, after of which we fight Tails. Following this, we cut to Shadow, of whom watches as Sonic blows up on the shuttle. We see Rouge, of whom attempts to steal the Chaos Emerald before Shadow intervenes. It turns out that Rouge is actually a government spy, sent to investigate the ultimate life form and whether Shadow was the product of the project. However, with the image depicting a different creature, Rouge is left confused by Shadow, in which he states that his memories may not be real either, but Shadow combats this. Real or fake, he's still Shadow, and he has a promise to fulfill. So with that, we enter the stage, final chase, as Eggman detects someone making their way to the Eclipse Cannon. After completing the stage, we fight Sonic and cut back to Eggman, of whom is about to activate the cannon before something goes wrong, thus ending the dark story. As Eggman tries to decipher why the cannon isn't firing, he finds his grandfather on the screen. Back with Sonic and Knuckles, they feel a vibration on the Ark before Rouge appears, telling them that this may be the end. The Ark is nearing towards the Earth at a large velocity, and should it be impacted, it'd be the end. We then see Gerald Robotnik plastered across the world, as he he announces the arrival of the Ark towards the Earth. Back with Sonic, Eggman appears with the diary of his grandfather. In it, we hear the story of how 50 years ago, Gerald Robotnik had created the ultimate life form with the intention of benefiting mankind. However, one day the military landed on the Ark and intended to shut down the project by force, resulting in the death of many, as his research was destroyed. This, in turn, led to the death of Maria Robotnik, his granddaughter. Kickstarting Gerald's thirst for revenge as he went insane planning such a thing, fearing his own inability to control his vengeful thoughts, he finished the project he had been working on, Shadow the Hedgehog. Eggman had inadvertently pulled the plan that his grandfather had hatched all those years ago into action as he ventured into the space colony with world domination in mind, but little did he know that he was only taking the steps closer to fulfilling his grandfather's plan for revenge. So with that, the others come up with a plan to stop the cannon. As it's currently being supplied by the overpowered energy from the Chaos Emerald, perhaps Knuckles could use the Master Emerald to stop them, thus meaning we'd need to get to the cannon's core, thus initiating the stage. In this stage, we play as Tails, Eggman, Rouge, Knuckles, and Sonic. This is definitely one of the more longer stages in the game as you cycle through playing through nearly all of the characters in the story. However, after of which we cut to Amy of whom is wandering the colony. She spots Shadow and decides to ask him to aid the others in stopping the impact. Shadow states that there isn't a point. There's nothing that can be done as he's already fulfilled his promise to Maria to take revenge. That had been his goal this entire time and he has no intention on doing anything further. But through the pleads of Amy, he's able to remember the real promise he made. It's revealed that throughout the game, Shadow had been misremembering. He promised to protect the world and give the citizens of the Earth a chance of happiness. That is what he was creating for. With a single tear streaming down his face, he springs into action. Back with Sonic and Knuckles, as they attempt to reach the Chaos Emeralds, they're stopped by the Bio Lizard, the prototype of the ultimate life form that Gerald had been working on. Just as they're about to engage, Shadow arrives, telling the two to proceed while he takes care of business with the Bio Lizard, thus initiating the boss fight. Subsequently to winning, we see his Knuckles attempts to stop the power of the Chaos Emeralds, though despite stopping the Emeralds, the Ark is still on a crash course to Earth. With the situation now more desperate than ever, and seemingly nothing else that can be done, Sonic and Shadow harness the power of of the Chaos Emerald, and thus begin the final boss fight against the Bio Lizard once more. This fight is one of the best I've ever had in a Sonic game. This one is even more climactic than the one in the previous game. Not only is this a fight against a much greater enemy, but it's also a fight against the clock, emphasized through the different characters telling you how much time you have left before the arc hits the earth. It's genuinely an amazing fight that not only provides a great challenge, but is also expansive of the climax throughout the game, especially with the game's main theme, Live and Learn, playing in the background throughout the entire thing. I really do love this fight, though with that, we 
finish the fight and watch as Sonic and Shadow stop the crash. With Shadow remembering the words of Maria one last time, they use Chaos Control one last time to finally put an end to the arc's approach towards the Earth. As cheers of celebration echo throughout the world, Shadow, unable to maintain his super form, falls down to the Earth. Sonic returns to the arc without him, handing the only remnant left of Shadow to Rouge. As the credits roll, we watch as the characters reflect upon the journey they finally reached the end of. A very moving section, they all put their rivalries aside and simply listen to one another. For example, Tails listening to Eggman as he reflects upon how he looked up to his grandfather, left lost at the thought of his true intention being to destroy the Earth and everyone on it. Or Sonic, for who the first time grieves the loss of a friend, yet hides their insecurity from the others and simply beckons everyone to return home. As he's the last to leave, he looks back and melancholically speaks the words, Sayonara, Shadow, the Hedgehog. Following the completion of the game, there are a lot of things you can do. For example, this is the game where the ranking system that would go on to become a staple in every game following this one was introduced, meaning you can go back and A rank all of the stages in this game. The ranking system in this game is definitely one of the more unforgiving ones, as it requires perfect precision with playing through them and a single mistake could cost you your chance at such a thing. One of the many things I want to discuss is that of the level of detail that went into this game. For example, the very stage selection screen, and how it maps the stages and where the character was during such a period of time. Not only does this allow for one to get a better understanding of the story and the timeline of events, but it allows for one to see how the different characters met at a specific time. An example being that of Sonic and Shadow and how both were unknowingly travelling towards one another leading to them meeting at the beginning of the hero story. This game is designed with a lot of replayability in mind, however it isn't perfect. One of the many things I dislike about the game is an entire third of its gameplay, but looking past the fact that I roll my eyes every time I play through the treasure hunting stages, I found this game to be one of the most enjoyable games I've ever indulged in. Now, another one of the things I want to discuss is that of the characters and how well executed the continuity is from the previous game. In such a thing, a lot of characters such as Tails finally found their independence and had gone through their own arcs of sorts. For example, Tails had strived to become more independent, something of which is expanded upon heavily in this game as he plays a more vital role in the hero story. For those who watched my video about Sonic Forces, you'd know that I used this game in particular as an example for why I personally did not like the character writing in that game. Following on from the example I used in that video and how Tails ultimately cowers in fear from something he not only has faced before but in other situations he would fight, in this in this game, he sees that Eggman has just disposed of Sonic in the space shuttle that just exploded, and uses that to fuel his desire to be more of use to Sonic and show that he's much more than his shadow. I think that should go to show that Sonic Adventure 2 is a game that won't hesitate to fire in multiple directions and continue the continuity in character writing than the previous game had kickstarted. It goes to show that Sonic Team really did put their all into making this game, and so with that, I want to conclude things. Sonic Adventure 2 is a brilliant game. Despite me disliking some aspects of this game, I hope that this video has made my stance regarding that evidently clear. This game represents a lot for this franchise. It represents its peak. It represents the best of what this franchise is capable of creating. To think that this is what kids media was capable of coming out with during that period in time is mind-boggling to me. Especially now with the games having been so hesitant to take the steps into telling a much darker and mature story, Sonic Adventure 2 truly does represent a lot of what this series had strived to do in direction. The fact that it took an entire decade with the release of Sonic Frontier for this series to finally stop being so hesitant to go back to its former storytelling is truly representative of what sets the series apart from its different time periods. Who knows, maybe Sonic Team finally realised that their lack of hesitance to tell stories that they told before is what made games like Sonic Adventure 2 so brilliant, among the gameplay and other factors such as that of the music. Sonic Adventure 2 isn't just one of my favourite Sonic games, it's one of my favourite games as a whole, and for that reason, I wholeheartedly recommend playing this game. It truly is amazing. So, there's the video, I hope you all enjoyed it. I've been wanting to make this video for so long now, and it really is a refreshing experience to finally be able to do so. Sonic Adventure 2 is an amazing game, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to view the list of games I want to make videos about, you can always do so with the link in the description. Similarly, if you want to follow me, then my socials will be linked in the description, as well as any afterthoughts or messages I may want to add. With that, I haven't really got much else I want to say, so I'll see you all in my next video. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I wish you all a very pleasant evening.